Jeremy Lin has now announced that he is going to be playing pro basketball in Taiwan. So I know a lot of people out there have not kept up with his journey quite as closely as we have. So we're going to give you the update of everything and also explain to you what this all means. Yeah, there's some articles going viral right now. Let's just give you the quick update. After winning a championship with the Raptors, Jeremy went to go play for the Beijing Ducks. He has a very good season in the CBA. He decides the next year to come back to the G League to try to rework his way back into the NBA. It ultimately doesn't work out. Then he went to the Guangzhou Long Lions, but then now he's leaving that and going to play for the Kaohsiung Steelers, which is in the P Plus League. Taiwan has three pro leagues. Dwight Howard famously plays in the T1 League, which is a different league. All right, guys, thank you for that breakdown. David, if you guys are excited about this video and want to hear seven points about Jeremy's career that you might have not thought about, then please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. We are releasing videos every day. Yeah, by the way, he's about to be teamed up with his old Houston Rockets teammate, Terrence Jones, Ooh. on the Kaohsiung Steelers. Oh, they might run the pick and roll. Guys, by the way, we've kept up with Jeremy for years. I mean, we watched him uh, back at Harvard when he played Seattle U when we were living in Seattle. Obviously, we do know Jeremy personally, uh, and, and sometimes we get to catch up with him and talk with him over text, and we saw him in Toronto not too long ago. So here are some seven points that any fan is going to feel nostalgic about maybe if you're not that you know following that closely these are going to be new things to you or at least jog your memory andrew point number one everybody remembers the gatorade tongue mm. blocking d rose off the backboard mm. waving off kobe when he was a laker and then hitting the fadeaway three over cp3 the game winner in toronto and jose calderon but how many people remember when he dunked on francisco garcia yeah. when he was a houston rocket on that fast break he did and then he also uh dunked on he crossed over John Wall and then dunked on the Wizards. Yeah. I mean, dude, Jeremy's had a few good dunks. And I'll tell you this, Jeremy was so fast that he could actually jump. I saw a dunk where he almost jumped from the dotted line, like a little yeah. bit before that with a one hand off one foot. It was crazy. It kind of reminded me of like young Brent Barry a little bit. Yeah. Um, point number two, Andrew, I definitely, for myself, and I know a lot of big Jalen followers or anybody who really just likes good organizations, in my opinion, <laughs> lost a lot of respect for Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks mm. after they pushed him out after he had Linsanity. Yeah, and here's the thing about Linsanity, guys. I know that Jeremy ended up tearing his meniscus uh, before the playoffs, but Linsanity was essentially that spark plug to get them into the playoffs. Dude, it, it solved one of their TV distribution right disputes. I think it was worth like $300 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah, just from a team aspect, I think it fired everybody up and it really got them over the edge. And then they got into the playoffs um, that year. Um, so I think that for what he did... I mean, I don't know. I'm not Carmelo Anthony, so I'm not the superstar of the team. I don't have all the power, but it seemed like he pretty much pushed Jeremy out and was like, yo, man, this guy's taking all the attention, man. I, uh, going into the playoffs, I don't want to, like, go through this guy, you know? Hey, man, I follow NBA a lot. I do not. I try my hardest to not have biased opinions. It literally turned out that Carmelo was just an elevated Glenn Robinson. Oh, okay. It's okay to have a biased opinion about Jeremy Lin. But we're going to kind of, true. we're keeping it as unbiased as possible. I'm just saying the garden was rocking like it hasn't been since the Ewing days. Ooh. John Starks. Uh, point number three, I think the Hornets years were super underrated, Andrew. We actually went down to Charlotte to watch a playoff game. He had some big threes in the fourth quarter and uh, he came off the bench, but he was able to do a lot and he actually finished fourth in sixth man of the year voting. So, Ooh. but a lot of people forget that because obviously that year, not a lot of people were following the Charlotte Hornets. Well, he played a great role and I'm glad that we got to visit him him, do a video with him, uh, check it out in the description down below. And then we also got to watch some of the playoff games. No, I just think that a lot of people like overlooked those years because yeah. you know, that was like basketball, basketball, because it was out of the limelight. Moving on to number four, Andrew, if you are a guard with long, narrow feet, Andrew, the X-Tep Jalen 2 SE was actually probably one of the best shoes of 2022 for wow. you. Wow. So I would, guys, X-Tep is a small up and coming Chinese Sneaker brand. Well, they're actually big in the running world. Okay, so they're, yeah, right, you're right. Small in the basketball world. And Jer the Jeremy Lin shoes, the Jalen ones, was like one of their first basketball shoes. The Jalen ones were not that good of a shoe. But the Jalen twos, huge upgrade to the point that on unbiased sneaker review websites, they scored pretty high. Yeah, they got like a 90 out of 100 rating. And I heard they were based off of the crazy ultralight boost 2016 that he used to wear when he was in Charlotte. So back to Charlotte. Point number five, Andrew. Some people say that he didn't contribute a lot to that uh, Raptors team that won the championship because, you know, he didn't uh, have crazy splits and, you know, he didn't get a lot of PT. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't a positive impact in the locker room. He's in practice every day. He's encouraging everybody. And he's bringing more additional fans to the arena to pump up the team. Yeah, I mean, uh, also... 
before he went to the Raptors, he actually had a stint on the Atlanta Hawks under with Trey Young. And Trey Young, he even spoke out and said, yo, Jeremy Lin was a great mentor, man. I learned a lot. He was a good player. He knows how to play the game. This is a really smart dude. So I'm like, if he was even able to help or at least mentor in some way, I'm not saying he's taking credit for Trey Young's career, but I'm saying if he was able to help Trey Young, then why wouldn't he add something to the Raptors team? There's a lot of stuff that happens not on the stat sheet. I yeah. know Jeremy maybe didn't shoot as well as he hoped on the Raptors, but I mean, he added still a there lot. There is a lot to be said for a veteran locker room presence Bro, that can coach people through personal issues, there, off court issues. Let me tell you this: there's a reason why everybody on the team and organization gets a ring when they win a championship right. because everybody's involved. Um, moving on to point number six, Andrew. I actually really liked the dreads that he had on Brooklyn, and I remember his spat with Kenya Martin because Kenya Martin was like, "Oh, why are you trying to look like this? Look like that?" And then he was goes, "Hey, man, I'm just trying to appreciate your culture, just like you have Chinese tattoos on your arm, Kenyon." I think that was one of the best comebacks. I thought that was one of the coolest exchanges that Jeremy had had because uh, it was funny. It was a good yeah. clapback. It was nice, clean, family friendly. He got him. Yeah, I remember Jeremy was looking like. Uh, like somebody who was hanging out with MC Hot Dog, like a Taiwanese beach rapper. Uh, um, I will say this, you know, it's really unfortunate the injuries, the huge structural injuries that happened to him in Brooklyn, we'll never know because he had very good splits as a starter, even though it's only over like 30 games. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, point number seven, this is more personal one. Jeremy Lin also went viral again, not just for the 38 at the Garden documentary, not just for going to play for the Gaussian Steelers, because he revealed to everybody he's actually secretly been married for two years. Yeah, so this is big because Jeremy, Jeremy had kept his personal life, at least his dating life, super, super under wraps for a long time to the point where, like, people had always actually wondered and asked, like, yo, is Jeremy Lin dating anybody? Like, right. who's he, he was celebrating, right? Yeah, well, right. because a lot of people were kind of curious, like, yo, who is this Asian NBA player dating? Like, he's such a big star. Yeah. He's the most famous Asian guy in the world at one point. Right. At one point he was. And so it was like, yo, is he dating, like, the baddies is he like abgs <laughs> and uh no i mean ultimately yeah i mean he's he's obviously a devout christian so he's, he's more conservative in that sense but he he had been dating and yeah. now he's married yeah cool. i actually met his wife on the set of the netflix show that me him and ronnie did and uh i can confirm she's really pretty she's really fashionable bilingual so very cool and i think a lot of people always wonder because the one aspect maybe that some of the bros always wish is they wish he would have like went on the date with Kim Kardashian when there was the rumors during Lynn Sanity and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Because, you know, there's always a Asian masculinity aspect to Jeremy's entire career. Oh, but course. I can't say that, you know, personally knowing Jeremy, I don't think he was fully consumed with that. Like he wasn't like trying to think about that. He's like, man, I just got to hoop. Yeah, I mean, during that time, he's literally just trying to hoop to stay in the league. So the last thing on his mind He's like, yo, is can to I hype. make Asian guys way cooler to get more dates? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not what he was thinking about, by the way. But yeah, anyways, guys, so those are like seven things that you might have not thought about or you might have forgotten about. Now, here are three major takeaways about Jeremy that we would like you guys to know. Yeah. Because I think it's like, you know... They had the documentary, 38 at the Garden. Now you know he's married. Now he's playing in Taiwan. I don't know how many years he's going to play in Taiwan. But, I mean, you know, maybe it is or is not his last stop. But I guess, like... Here's some things that you should know about yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy always knew who he was, and he very much stayed him. Through all, all the superstardom, millions of dollars, endorsements, being followed everywhere. Like, he literally is still, I feel like, a Taiwanese church guy from the Bay Area yeah. who plays Dota. No, and, and I feel like uh, if I had to compare him to other players, like between... Kevin Herter and Tyler Hero, he's more actually like Kevin Herter. You don't right. really know about Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter keeps it low-key. Tyler Hero is on stage with Jack Harlow trying right. to be in the mix. IG baddies, everything. Um, I would say it's also comparable to like Logic versus uh, Jack Harlow. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy didn't really try to buy in too much and change himself, even right. though I think a the lot Gucci of- Gucci shade lifestyle, yeah, right? I think a lot of people were living vicariously through him, so we were all hoping he was going to like- build this entourage and be super cool and like, I don't know, support Asian rappers. That's not on his mind, man. He's just trying to hoop and play basketball and ultimately being good at basketball was going to make the most impact. Right. Point number two, Andrew, there are a lot of technical basketball dynamics as well as outside political dynamics that impacted Jeremy's career, probably in both good and bad ways. Yeah. And I think this is really referring to especially that time, uh, his most recent stint in the G League where he averaged like 19 or 20 points a game. Good he was, splits. He was doing wise. good. He finished at one of the top in the G League, but he didn't get a contract. He got skipped over by all the other teams. And I think a lot of people jumped to it being politics. First of all, 
I think there was some politics involved. I think that, you know, for whatever reason, maybe Jeremy uh, brings in a certain amount of attention that Media maybe attention, right? some teams do or don't want. Um, he's kind of a high-profile role player at this point. Um, but I, I think there's also the aspect where it's like a lot of teams, and you see this for all teams, that they really try to develop these young, long wingman players that are like three and D, that are like six foot six, wingspan, six, seven. Wingspan, wingspan, wingspan. Yeah, that can shoot threes and lock down. And those are the type of players they love bringing in for the G League because they make like the perfect role player. You know what I mean? And I think maybe, I guess at the time, uh, maybe teams didn't see that like, need a point guard like Jeremy. You know right. what I mean? And obviously, um, if you guys don't know, maybe you're a casual fan, you don't really know basketball like that. Jeremy's biggest asset was probably uh, his ultra quick first step. At one point, scientifically, he had one of the five quickest first steps in the entire NBA. That allows him to beat his initial defender. Now the initial defender is trailing. Help side has to come. That means one offensive player has drawn two defenders. The defense is starting to get scrambled. At that point, you can either pull up for a jump shot, draw a foul, get a layup, or see a passing window, skip pass yeah. across the court. I mean, Jeremy Lin really, uh, at his fastest speed, was one of the fastest guys in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, like we said, the shooting, I think Jeremy is a, is a decent shooter. Right. He's not a sharp shooter. He's not a yeah. bad shooter. Yeah, I, I do think things like that, and obviously, you know, Jeremy had been training and, and trying to get better at everything, you know, for, for so long. And I guess, like, yeah, had he could he knock down the three more consistently, maybe that would have helped him. But, you know, again, like, by the time he was in the G League, he was a little bit older than a lot of the other guys who were fighting for spots. So. But, yeah, always was keeping up with Jeremy, always fighting for him. Um, overall, at the end of the day, you know, and there's various probably valid opinions on both sides, man. Because um, you know how, like, some people are a Jeremy Lin fan in the sense they're just like, yay, Jeremy, be in the All-Star game still. And then there's the fans that are like, dude, he's so disappointed me. I thought he was going to be the one. And I thought he was going to be a triple-double machine after that. All in all, man. Jeremy Lin had a hell of a career, hey. and he broke so many stereotypes. A lot of people just think that, like, he was going to be the team manager. And you know how, like, a lot of people view Asian men in a mainstream level? I'm not talking about little micro fishbowl enclaves. Most people in America view Asian guys, Andrew, to be more like a mathlete than, like, a real professional American sport athlete. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. he broke all that. I mean, dude. While being just, smart enough to st probably still be a mathlete. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I think that... The fact that he's still playing after all that he's been through, all those injuries, and he's still happy playing, I mean, I still think that shows a lot. I think that's really cool. Yeah, like, we all wish he was still in the NBA or on a team somehow, uh, contributing maybe even on the bench as a vet or something like that. I mean, yeah, that that I'm sure he would wish that too. But ultimately, like, the guy's still hooping. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Lynn Sanity changed a lot of lives. It at least at that time inspired a lot of people now maybe a lot of people had not been thinking about jeremy for the past few years understandable to some extent but honestly the impact is still there honestly watch 38 at the garden hassan minaj and ronnie did a hell of a job narrating shout yeah. out to jenny yang too like basically they just kind of spell it out for you like why linsanity was so impactful yeah I, if you need to be reminded why linsanity was impactful watch that movie HBO, 38 at the Garden. Anyway, let us know in the comments section below what type of Jeremy Lin fan are you guys? Have you been following everything, watching even the CBA highlights? Or are you guys more casual and you're like, yeah, yeah, what happened since Lin Sandy? I mean, I'm sure there's so many people that fall like so many different uh, plots on the spectrum. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.